everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about EVGA's GTX 980 Ti hybrid video card and this video card is a hybrid card in the sense that it uses two forms of cooling. It uses a liquid cooler, a CLC or closed loop liquid cooler and it also uses a blower fan with the traditional aluminum heatsink design and it cools the VRM and VRAM modules that way with the CLC being used for the GPU itself. The 980 Ti Hybrid is the same as all other 980 Ti's. It's the same GM200 chip. It's the same 2816 CUDA cores. The only major difference here, other than the cooler, is that it has a, uh, a slightly boosted core clock and boost clock when shipped as the EVGA model. So this card we have here is shipped at 1140 MHz. The reference design, just for frame of reference, is a 1000 MHz clock. So we've got a boost of 140 over reference and then the boost clock of EVGA's unit is 1228 megahertz over the 1075 of the reference design so it doesn't sound like a huge number and in my previous overclocking video I showed that on the reference design you can actually achieve a 1444 megahertz overclock with the 980 Ti and that's a pretty substantial overclock with actually substantial increases in frame rate as well but we were thermally limited there was a thermal ceiling because the reference cooler although it is pretty good for what it is, was not capable of allowing an extreme overclock on the 980 Ti. It's just, it's too hot, it's pushed to its limits. So that's where EVGA's 980 Ti Hybrid comes in and that's what we're reviewing today, looking at the thermals, the power draw, and the frame rate performance. EVGA's Hybrid 980 Ti is a $770 video card, so that puts it at $120 over the reference design, which is a $650 card. And if you already own the reference card, you can purchase the modding kit, which is basically just this faceplate, the underlying mounting bracket, and the CLC, an AceTech CLC for $100, so that's a slightly better deal. Whether or not the card itself is worth it is something we'll talk about momentarily, but those are your two options if you're looking into a liquid-cooled GTX 980 Ti right now. And overclocking is the same as with all other Maxwell overclocking. I've talked about this for about a year now hasn't changed. So you've got your power percent target, which you can increase to 110% on this card, and some cards you can do like 125%. That just means you have 10% or 25% in those two examples over the base TDP of the card to supply more wattage to the card for overclocking. You can change the voltage, of course, for increased overhead and stability, and you can change the core clock and memory clock. That's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward, but the power percent target is the one item that has changed overclocking reasonably for the Maxwell series. This overclocking table shows our stepping for the overclocking and you've got the pass and fail here on the right side. The far right is the endurance test. The second to the most on the right is the short term test, about five minutes of burn-in just to make sure it's stable before we move to the endurance test. And on the 980 Ti hybrid, a final value of a 160 megahertz offset resulted in a 15 14 megahertz max clock. The reference card rested at 255 megahertz offset or 1444 megahertz max clock. And the reason the offset is higher for the reference card is simply because the base frequency for the reference card is lower than the EVGA hybrid, which is 1140 megahertz versus 1000. So you've got a 140 jump there. In this thermals table, this is a new one I'm doing, it's thermals over time, so you see temperature, which is delta T over ambient over time, and ambient's 21C, so we're subtracting that from the absolute temperature, which gives us the delta, so we're subtracting ambient here. And in the thermals table you're looking at now, the orange and green represent the hybrid, and the reference card is shown in red, blue, and purple, and then you've got your legend on the right side, the clock for clock reference is in green and purple, and that's going to be the most linear for the reference versus hybrid in terms of thermals because we set the clocks identically to each other. That way you're looking strictly at the cooler performance itself. So we see how well does the CLC perform, how well does the Air Plus aluminum heatsink perform in the clock for clock testing. This test takes place over 20 minutes. It's automated, so it lines up almost perfectly to the second. And because of this, we can see that the CLC cooled unit, this one, is actually slower to heat up. So it's, it's not only a lower temperature overall, but it takes longer to achieve its maximum temperature. 
this next chart shows the delta T over ambient average values once equilibrium is reached. So we wait until there's equilibrium. So basically when the CPU, or in this case, the GPU sits at something like 80 Celsius before subtracting ambient, and it just sort of stays there. Take all those numbers, average them, and produce this delta T over ambient average chart. And this shows that the 980 Ti hybrid at stock settings, 1140 megahertz, runs at 22.91 Celsius and the overclocked version at 1514 megahertz, a pretty big jump, is at 24 Celsius. Reference is nearly three times as hot in the 60s uh, Delta T and it's not quite dangerous but it is definitely a limiter and because this is Delta T you need to remember that a 60 something Celsius measurement is actually 80 in the real world for a standard 70 degree Fahrenheit home. If you're sitting that at that range of ambient, you are overclocked, and uh, and reference performance will be at around 80 Celsius. It's pretty hot, and it's approaching the 90 Celsius TJ Maxx limiter that NVIDIA sets. Power consumption is effectively identical across all devices tested. There's no disparity that's noteworthy here. I think the worst case scenario is 7 watts, which is pretty insubstantial at this point, and is within the margin of test error because we're manually logging the wattage drawn over time. So basically the same which makes sense because all we're doing is changing the cooler we're not changing the gpu itself and finally here are a couple of game benchmarks showing the fps performance of various games for the most part the hybrid card exceeds titan x performance pre overclock and where it doesn't it is very close to beating the titan x card grid autosport is sort of a weird game in that the titan x always performs better than the 980 ti even when that's not true in other games we test Applying overclocks puts the 980 Ti reference and 980 Ti hybrid close to each other in performance, but keep in mind that the temperatures are 3x on the overclocked reference card. So even though the, the performance is pretty much the same, which may make it hard to justify the cost, the part that matters here is the thermals. And over time, if you're overclocking any kind of semiconductor, GPUs and CPUs included, they lose some of their lifespan. So it's, it's very aggressive on a semiconductor's life to overclock it and overvolt it especially and that's because you're increasing the heat to the device so that's the, the core issue and increasing voltage just isn't something that they like a whole lot of so to reduce the heat using a CLC down to 20 Celsius Delta T is a pretty big deal and that does mean that you have more overhead for overclocking without the extra concern of potentially killing your device substantially early compared to the reference card, which is much hotter. We gave the GTX 980 Ti Hybrid our editor's choice and best of bench awards for single GPU graphics card performance. The 980 Ti Hybrid comes pretty close to the Titan X. They trade blows in a lot of places, but the 980 Ti, even this one at $770, is still a lot cheaper than the $1,000 to $1,100 Titan X, and that makes it a pretty good buy. It's also showing that liquid is where the industry is going for high-end GPUs. This is something that is consistent with AMD's own pushes. AMD going with liquid for the Fury X and all the other Fury cards and even the 390X in some cases. So liquid's a big deal and the cooling performance is absolutely noteworthy. The gaming performance is, is good. It is worth note, but it's not nearly, it's sort of eclipsed by the cooling performance. And then power consumption is basically the same. So that's where we are with the 980 Ti Hybrid. Check out the article in the description below for more information. And if you like this type of content, check out our Patreon page. Help us out. It's pretty cool to see you guys donating and supporting the content. And I will see you all next time.